Hello everyone, uh, this is Bejman, Medical Physics Program Coordinator. Um, I'm going to give you a brief introduction about medical physics. If you have any questions, please contact me. Um, here is my email. I'm more than happy to give you more information about medical physics. First, um, uh, we should acknowledge uh, Nungar people, the owner of this land. Um, today, I will give you some information about uh, the differences about medical physics and, uh, and, and biophysics, history of medical physics, um, definition of medical physics, career, career pathways, research themes, and collaborating uh, institutions. What is the difference between biophysics and medical physics? In biophysics, um, it's more about structure, dynamics, interactions, and function of biological system in terms of uh, physics principles. Uh, while in medical physics, uh, it's all about application of physics in medicine, including medical imaging, radiation safety, radiotherapy to cure cancer, and investigation of interactions of radiation with cells, tissues, and organs of human body. Radiation measurement and dosimetry is another important area of medical physics, and it's good to know medical physicists are healthcare professionals at different centers. Um, a little bit of history about medical physics. So radiology and physics have always gone hand in hand. So we can see started in around 125 years ago when Wilhelm Rodkin uh, introduced, um, discovered, we can say, X-ray radiation. And he has got, he got the first Nobel Prize in physics because of this uh, discovery. Physics has um, had a central role in the development and advancement of radiology and radiotherapy after this discovery. In short definition, medical physics is the application of physics and using principles of physics in medicine and healthcare. But in more details, medical physics is a branch of applied physics pursued by medical physicists to use physics and technology principles, methods, and techniques in the clinical environment and in research for prevention, diagnosis, and treatment of human disease with the specific goal of improving human health and well-being. So medical physicists are healthcare professionals with a specialized training in the medical application of physics in, and technology in medicine. At UWA, uh, we provide or offer uh, masters and PhD in medical physics. Uh, medical physics is a way of using physics, maths, biology, and computing knowledge to develop tools and treatment that help um, humans with longer and healthier life. In all of the medical Imaging methods, uh, including X-ray, mammography, computed tomography or CT scan, ultrasound, magnetic resonance imaging, the presence of online or, or on-site uh, consultant physicists is required. So these technologies are complex and can only be checked by experts who understand them. So that's a reason uh, we need to have a background in physics and maths, and also it's good to have physics, maths, and engineering or computing to be able to understand what's going on in a linear accelerator, for example, to produce high energy X-ray for treatment of cancer, or what's going on in MRI imaging, how we can get these images. So the knowledge of quantum mechanics and magnetism is necessary. This is a hydrogen dipole and when we expose this hydrogen dipole or water to high energy or half uh, field of magnets so or when they apply 
radio frequency pulse, we can see the difference in, in the density of electrons or, or protons in, in this case, which is hydrogen. And then we can create image, which is MR image, which is great. And for all of these reasons, we need to have background in physics. The pathway, uh, it's good to know UW and five other universities in Australia, uh, they have accreditation from the Australian College of Physical Scientists and Engineers in Medicine. We call it ACPSEM. When you finish your undergraduate in physics or engineering, you can start your master's, depends on your background, you can finish in three or four semesters, and then you can start doing clinical training job in mechanics. So when you finish your master's based on your interest, you can pursue your career as a radiation oncology medical physicist or diagnostic imaging medical physicist, physics in this uh, training. And when you finish your training, then you can start um, be a pro professional and start doing a professional jobs at, in hospital. The other pathway is to do PhD. And after PhD, you can do, um, again, TAP training at hospital or uh, start doing research and development in industries or universities or working for uh, government in different um, centers um, like radiation safety officer and your responsibility is to uh, check do documents and uh, write rules for radiation safety for your own um, government defend for in different states and then and also um, make sure that your environment and your community are safe in terms of radiation. At UWA, Master of Physics, Medical Physics and other specialization, uh, they, they all uh, have uh, COVID support. Also, medical physics has when you start medical physics, you will be eligible for students' income support as well from um, the government. So you have two support, first for your uh, degree, another for income. Uh, when you finish your uh, master's, if you start TIAP, for example, program here at hospital, like a training job, that would be your salary in a public hospital, but in private is more. But when you finish your training and when you work at a specialized medical physicist, you get a salary in, private, in public centers. So in private is more. It's good to know two thirds of all patients with cancer need radiotherapy which is a huge uh, workload for uh, in radiotherapy and medical physicists, the existence of medical physicists in any treatment is necessary. So uh, the, our job is to make sure that the treatment machine, which is a linear accelerator here, uh, is working properly and the high energy X-ray killing cancer cell here is just uh, hitting the target with appropriate energy and parameters. So the other type of radiotherapy, uh, we call it brachytherapy. Uh, we can, you can see radioactive seeds here or implanted inside the prostate cancer. Uh, the job of medical physicists is first to calculate the dose inside the tumor and make sure we can expose as a high energy or prescribed energy to the tumor with less uh, radiation to healthy tissues around the tumor. Um, we don't want to produce secondary cancer, we just want to kill the cancer cell locally. So we call it brachytherapy. The CT scan, so you see in CT scan, we have 2D image, but uh, a lot of 2D images, we can create 3D data out of these 2D. So using mathematical methods and physics principles. MRI, as I discussed shortly, is magnetic field um, to give energy to protons, and then when the protons give the energy back to the system, we can have a good map of proton density or water. It's all based on quantum mechanics and magnetism and maths. Ultrasound, we use waves. It's really safe, like MRI. There is no ra harmful radiation, but we use wave in high frequency, more than 20K here. And you see sending and reflection of the, the beam or, or sound from the 
objects inside the body can give us some information. We can create 3D data, what's going on inside the body, or even in cardiology, we can see using Doppler effect and see the um, flow of blood inside the vessels, or in this case, we can see heart. We can see the direction of the blood or any uh, mis uh, malfunction or a problem in the in heart can be clearly uh, uh, illustrated in, in these images. So the other fascinating method for imaging is nuclear medicine. So in medical physics, we attach drugs with uh, uh, elements, which is radioactive active elements for radioisotope and with absorption of this um, active material inside the, the target, which can be a tumor, we can detect the tumor, we can see here in CT, this one is CT scan, but this one is nuclear medicine image. So the tumor here is detectable, but it's not clear here in CT. So it's a great physiologic type of image. And you can see a, a gamma camera here, patient is, is there. Gamma camera is based on detection of gamma ray. It's like any other camera, but in your mobile phone, you have a camera. So, but uh, your camera is um, sensitive to visible light. But uh, specific this type of camera here, you can see this uh, camera is uh, sensitive to high energy X-ray or gamma ray. And then we can detect the, the hot spots or spots with more densities and detect the um, lesions. So the, the other um, uh, great area of our uh, work is in treatment planning. In radiotherapy before treatment of patient, we need to plan the, the treatment using CT data. And then by using mathematical calculations or multi column modeling, we, we can simulate the radiation dose to the tumor before treatment and check it, the physicist should be inside for each treatment and check each treatment plans and give approval for the, 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 the plan. After checking the plan, so we need to expose the, the plan to, not to the patient because it's too early. We can measure the radiation inside a model, we call it phantom. You can see here a plastic patient, and we can measure the, the radiation and make sure we can deliver this radiation to, to, the, to the patient. <laughs> you can see all techniques are not really easy to go. So like um, two more here in lung cancer, it's moving and it's our art as a medical physicist to make sure we're giving the dose to the tumor, not healthy tissues in the wrong, in, in lung. So lots of techniques and, and lots of methods being developed by physicists to be able to cover the, the tumor with high radiation and less radiation to healthy tissues. So all in all, I explained, so we need Proof from medical physics before uh, proof or approval from medical physics is not possible to treat any patient or have diagnostic imaging in any center. In terms of research in our group, we can see we mainly focus on radiotherapy techniques. And the reason is that uh, there is a high demand in radiotherapy. We can see biological modeling, modeling of uh, the interaction of radiotherapy and immunotherapy explain it briefly later, and different techniques, 3D printing, 3D dosimetry, uh, drug studies, cyber knife, and so on. Nuclear medicine, we have research in nuclear medicine, and also radiation biology, which is a great area, oil guided radiotherapy planning, simulation of um, cancer tissue, and so on. Radiation protection and medical health physics is another type of research you can do. So to, to, to boost your knowledge in radiation safety. Diagnostic imaging in any area we have uh, research and also other themes like clinical trials, biostatistics, uh, 3D data processing and machine learning, which is a new area 
and we have lots of projects in machine learning and many other things. So what is machine learning? So in um, data science, when we're dealing with lots of data, uh, we can extract data uh, from huge images, but use computer and computer can learn out of the decision being made by uh, uh, physicists or doctors and then for the future you can make a decision and tell um, the prescription or at least suggest i can say the prescription for uh, doctors even we can use these techniques to improve image quality give less radiation to the patient and get better image quality for treatment planning, so or diagnostic of cancer. So in pathology, we can use machine learning because in all of these areas we use medical images. So we have access to all of these digital medical images, huge numbers, and we can create a good training model for machine to be able to predict or detect and give us more information. In a lot of cases, doctors may miss, but this way uh, that will be helped. This is another example to give you more information. So it's a traditional method for diagnostic. You can see taking images, data processing, diagnostic and prescription. So, but in machine learning or artificial intelligence methods, the first two steps are the same, but then machine do the process and detect the lesion and send the report to doctors. This way, <coughs> it's just like it's GPS in your car. So you can have it listen to this or ignore it, have your own way. It's based on doctor. This way we can just make sure we are not missing any detail just because doctors is based on naked eye and then we might, we might miss, the, miss this thing. There are some facts, it's good to know. Diagnostic errors plays a role in up to 10% of patient death. Around 20 million radiology reports contain clinical, clinically significant errors. Around two thirds of world population lacks adequate, uh, adequate um, access to radiologists it would be around 5 billion people. If we can develop these methods and give them free to, to them to have access to at least this pre-diagnostic, then we can prevent a lot of unnecessary death. So the other method that we discussed a little bit was, uh, is Monte Carlo uh, modeling. It's based on statistics of big numbers and also interaction of these big numbers, which are protons or photons uh, with medium, which is our tissue, the patient tissue, and then inter physical interaction of these things. And we can simulate model all of these interactions. This is the basic of treatment uh, planning, but we can do lots of uh, research and development using Monte Carlo methods. For example, here you can see we can uh, measure or calculate, sorry, it's better to say calculate the radiation to, to the tumor using multi-column method before treatment. The other area where we're really active is immunotherapy or immunotherapy and radiotherapy together is unknown phenomenon just under investigation, but it's uh, getting clear when we radiate the tumor with uh, the is trigger the immunosimulatory uh, the, 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 in, in the tumor. And um, by using some drugs, we can have more effective treatments. So that is another area of research. In terms of collaboration, we have collaboration with Harvard Medical School. We can send our, our masters after they finish to do PhD there. And lots of presti prestigious and, and um, the leading centers in research and universities across the world. Nationally, we have lots of support from different centers and universities in Australia in both training, education, research of our postgraduate students. 
So why study medical physics at UWA? The course has been accredited, so designed and developed by academic who are actively involved in research, and also lectures, uh, lectures being delivered by medical physicists who are in the field. So we have lots of practical sessions in, in our uh, program, which is a great um, opportunity for you to learn in industry and large size of collaboration teaching hospitals covering um, the, the research and training of the program. If we have access to lots of research centers and we can use the facilities, hospital facilities and experts to help us um, for future employability and better uh, employability. We have opened up policies and uh, programs being monitored by uh, ACPSM and also by our students. We seek feedback for every semester, every even after each lecture to make sure that the students uh, are happy. So in summary, uh, the concepts of medical physics has been applied in medicine for many years. So, but still some unanswered questions such as, would it be possible to produce uh, biological models of tumors and normal tissue dose response in the therapy? Can the interaction of the therapy and immunotherapy be modeled? What are the possible uh, possibilities for providing the least invasive diagnostic methods with superior image quality for each patient. Would it be possible to assist and gradually replace radiologists with artificial intelligence? So how can the outcome of the therapy be predicted for every patient and how can the treatment be tailored accordingly for each patient? Okay, guys, if you have any questions, please um, send me email. More than happy to give you a tour or, or talk. Um, for more information, please uh, um, visit our website. If you want to see our alumni, what they are doing, please uh, visit our website, uwmedicalphysics.com. But our website is uwmedicalphysics.org. We have lots of good information on Facebook. We weekly post a lot of things in our Facebook and we have a very popular Instagram. Thanks very much for your attendance and thanks for your for listening. <laughs>